Welcome back to Old Tavern Farm. Today, we are going to talk about bread. Many of you may not know, but years ago before we moved here to the farm, I worked as a chef instructor at a community college near to where I used to live. And I taught the 100 level baking classes. So um, the first thing I would teach every semester was yeast bread. Uh, this is a different form of the bread that I taught in that class. And this is actually my own recipe. I have written this recipe from scratch. I've tested it and tested it and then I tested it again and screwed it up and went back to the drawing board, did it again and came up with this particular loaf. Now this loaf uses a, a slightly smaller, um, many of you have seen my zucchini bread recipe. I use that same size pan. Um, and we'll talk about it as we work on this recipe. I prefer this size for a couple of reasons. One um, is that it is more sort of old fashioned size to fit a sandwich bag. This is, um, I call it Old Tavern Farm, old fashioned white sandwich bread. It's 100% um, white bread flour and um, probably not the healthiest for you, but I'm not going to judge anyone because <laughs> I'll eat all three of these by myself. Actually, these are going to my parents in Raleigh. My parents live about 700 miles away from me and I send them baked goods from time to time. So um, once we finish with this lesson, I hate to call it a lesson that makes me sound like a teacher, um, which isn't a bad thing. Love you teachers. I've worked as a teacher myself. It's a tough job. Anyway. Um, so these are going to go into bags and get packed up, frozen, and sent in the mail to my parents. So, hi mom, hi dad. Um, so I thought I would go ahead and go through the, the recipe and the technique. I'm using my kitchen aid with the dough hook attachment. Um, but it can certainly be done with a plain old big bowl and wooden spoon. Um, just fine. So, uh, you, if you will, like to join me. I sometimes stumble over my sentences and I can't access my words because I'm getting old. Um, if you would like to join me in this lesson, I will go through step by step of how to make this white sandwich bread. It is absolutely easy as pie. It is no, there is, it's not fussy. It comes out every time. And can I just tell you, I've heard so many TV chefs, people, TV people um, talking about how baking is so precise and you have to be exact. And, oh, it's intimidating because you have to use numbers. You can't just throw stuff in a pan and like taste it and adjust for. Okay, maybe you can't do that because you do have to follow a recipe because you can't taste it while you're working on it. You have to make it and form it and bake it and let it cool for a minute and then taste it. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's different from regular cooking in that aspect, but it is not so precise that you cannot just make what you want to make. So I am not, not one of those bakers, pastry chefs, all that, that, um, insists on exact measurement, scaling. The proper technique is to scale everything on a scale and volume measurements and all that technical stuff. But I don't like to, I don't like to teach it that way. I like people to just get in there and get your hands dirty and try it out, see what happens. Because at the end of the day, you're just going to eat it. It's food. It's not going to like a blue ribbon competition. You're not going to be judged for it. It's just going to be your lunch. So, all right, I'm going to stop talking because the on switch is like on and I'm just rambling. So I would like you to join me if you will. And we're going to go make some bread and then we're going to um, ship it to Raleigh. So come on, let's make some bread. I start with six and a half cups of King Arthur artisan bread flour. Now you are certainly, certainly welcome to use any type of flour you might have. I probably wouldn't use cake or pastry flour, but
but all-purpose flour is fine. I probably wouldn't use self-rising either, but any bread flour, high gluten flour, or all-purpose flour is just fine for this recipe. I'm using my mixing bowl today that fits into my big stand mixer, but you can certainly use a bowl and a spoon just as well. Next, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of white granulated sugar. And then one of my biggest secrets in my baking is this product, dried milk. Sometimes this product is called instant milk or milk solids. It's all the same thing. So I'm gonna use half a cup of powdered milk And then I'm going to add two teaspoons of instant dry yeast. I buy my yeast in bulk bags and store that in my mason jars so I can have it whenever I need it. I'm gonna add my bowl to my mixer Moving my next ingredients over by the mixing bowl. I'm going to add my dough hook to my mixer using my dough hook attachment. And just let it spin for a moment. Next I'm going to take half a stick of butter that I've sliced into smaller portions. If you're doing this bread by hand, it's really helpful to melt your butter first so that it incorporates more easily um, than using when you're using a, a manual method. This mixer is very powerful and it will break up those small bits of butter fairly quickly. My next step is going to be to add one cup of warm milk along with one and a half cup of lukewarm or room temperature water. This step takes a little bit longer because we want to add the liquid slowly so that we get the, allow the mixer to catch up with the addition of the liquid. If you add it too quickly, you can sometimes end up with a pool of liquid in the center of your flour mixture, which is not the end of the world, it just takes a little while to work it back out. If you add it slowly, your dough will form a nice consistent ball in the center of your bowl and it will just speed up the entire process. So as you can see, once I add a little bit of liquid, the wetter part of the dough will start to pick up the dry parts of the flour mixture along the edge. You will start to see that it will start to smear and get leave some little bits of raggy bits on the edge of the bowl and that's what to expect at this stage in mixing your bread. I'm going to continue to add my liquid ingredients and my next my next ingredient will be uh, one and a half tablespoons of salt. That's actually one and a half teaspoons of salt. <laughs> salt helps to tighten up the gluten at this stage where you can see there's a lot of it sticking to the sides of the bowl. And after a few minutes, your dough will start to pull away from the sides of the bowl and actually leave a clean surface, as you can see here. At this stage, and this has been kneading uh, on the mixer for about 15 minutes. And if you're doing it by hand, you'll need to need, to need it. Easy for me to say. 
for about 15 to 20 minutes until it feels damp to the touch and pulls easily away from your spoon or your hand or your dough hook. I'm going to remove my bowl from my mixer, checking to see that everything is pulling cleanly away on all sides. I'm going to wipe down my countertops, making sure that they're clean and free of any debris. And I'm going to tip my dough out of the bowl and onto the worktop just to give it a little extra kneading and checking all the edges and making sure everything looks and feels good. You can tell that your dough is ready because it does not stick to your hands or your worktop. It's slightly damp to the touch and feels elastic and smooth. I'm going to tuck in the rough ends and put them on the bottom, forming a bowl or a ball. Now I'm going to let my rest my bowl over the top and let it rise. That step was called bulk fermentation and it will rise to about twice its size. After about an hour, you will see that the ball will be looser and will be about twice its original size, at least one and a half. I'm going to get the little bits out of the bowl, waste not, want not. And at this stage, I'm going to go ahead and divide my dough into three equal parts. I'm using this tool we've looked at before called a bench knife or a bench scraper. Some people call it a bread knife, but I find that to be slightly confusing. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my bench knife and I'm gonna divide that dough into three equal parts. And I've set out my, my smaller pans and I will leave a link in the description box to these pans. They're about four by about seven and a half. I'm going to prepare them with pan spray. They're very, very nonstick anyway, and they're very, very inexpensive. So when I bake, I bake in large quantities. So I like these smaller, smaller types of pans. So using my bench knife, I'm going to separate these portions. I'm just going to tuck them away from each other and into smaller, more manageable size. And at this stage, we're going to be forming our loaf. So all I do is I take the smooth side and put it down on the bench and I tuck the uglier bits up inside, folding like sort of an envelope. And then I use the friction of the counter pushing away from me to form the top of the loaf. And don't be afraid of those bubbles that form. That is just the yeast that is activating inside and causing gas bubbles to form. Once again, smooth top down, roll and tuck, tuck, fold and push. So, sort of forming a torpedo shape. And then we're gonna put that seam side down in the pan. Smooth part facing up. That will be your finished crust. One last time. Pretty side down. Sometimes you can get a little bit of a raggy bit on the top as you're forming your loaf. It's not always perfect. Those little raggy bits are easy to get rid of. Just re-tuck, re-fold, re-roll and those little bits will stretch out slightly better. There's no need to fear over handling at this point. You can handle this dough as much as you like. Then I'm gonna spray the tops once they're all panned up with more baking spray, just to keep the tops from drying out. At this point, I'm gonna cover with plastic wrap, again, to keep any stray breeze or maybe any 
pet hair or anything from getting on top of the loaf, keeping it nice and nice and moist inside. I'm a little fastidious about this stage. I like to have everything neat and tidy. The spray also keeps the dough from sticking to the plastic. Then I'll get a tea towel or any kind of cloth and just drape it over the top to keep the plastic from blowing off or moving. Let those rest for about an hour and they will grow to be about 50% of their original size. Some recipes call you to let them rise to twice their size, but I find that to be slightly too large. This is about where I like to start my baking process. I'm gonna remove these to a 350 degree oven and let them bake for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, when they're lightly golden brown, I'll remove them to my board and I'll let them cool for a little while. As you can see, they come easily out of these pans and they are gonna be sort of lightly, see? lightly golden brown on Was the that hard? No, it wasn't hard at, at all. At this point, you're the ready to go. The bread did pretty much all your work for you. All you had to do is find something to do while it was rising, right? Movies, book sewing, knitting, quilting, raking leaves, drinking coffee, wine, whiskey. Anyway, let's get this box packed up. So my mother was a, is a um, consummate homemaker. And back in the day they used to call it a housewife and she actually went to school for home economics at a college in the 60s, 50s and 60s. I can't remember, sorry mom. Um, anyway, so she always taught us growing up that we should keep these bags that um, commercial products come in and use them for other things. Um, I think my, my mother-in-law, I'm telling a big secret, who I adore as much as I adore my mom. My mother-in-law, my husband tells me, used to keep these bags too and she would um, wrap her kids' feet in them when they went out to play in the snow after the sock, put on the sock and then plastic bag over the top, rubber band. <laughs> I love that story. Okay, anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and bag up these loaves and we are going to parise them. I'm just gonna store them in the box for now, but let's see, what is this? Oh. Sub rolls, sub rolls. Um, and you do have to slice this bread, but sometimes in life you have to break out of your comfort zone a little bit and get out there and experience the serrated knife sub life. And this one, what is this? Eight rolls, oh, hamburger rolls, buns. Different things in different regions, I guess. And my parents don't mind that. They, uh, they love this bread as much as I love this bread. And so I am going to stick this in the freezer for a little while and get these bad boys all frozen up. Um, bread freezes really, really well. And there's no reason to not make several loaves at a time while you're baking and then stick the ones you're not eating in the freezer. And um, it's a great way to have fresh, healthy, interesting, non-squishy white bread on hand. It makes great sandwiches, makes great French toast. Um, super good, uh, super good, like open-faced hot sandwiches. It's another, cause it holds together. Um, it's really, it's a great soft, but still substantial type of crumb. And um, yeah, eat it right out of the oven with butter on it. Oh, all right. I'm gonna have to go make more. Because <laughs> I can't bake it, I can't slice into this. It's, it's leaving and flying on a jet plane. All right, people, thank you so much for visiting. Big hugs. And I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye bye.